hello everyone welcome back to my channel and uh, welcome to anybody who's new here i am cosmic spectrum art and i share my art process with you guys here so yeah in this video i'm sharing the process of this illustration that i did especially for my kickstarter campaign for my new art book which is currently at its very last stages it's almost done there's less than 48 hours left in the campaign and we're super close to reaching the final stretch goal which is an extra 16 pages added to the book so if you have not seen it yet or if you want to support my channel uh this book is looking amazing and i can't wait to hold it in my hands so please check it out link is in my description below i really hope we manage to reach that goal i think it would be a total um loss and waste if we don't so yeah consider supporting the campaign and um this illustration like i mentioned was drawn specifically for the campaign in order to be the cover image for the custom sketchbook that's available as an add-on among many other uh things so yes anyway i was having quite a struggle coming up with an idea for this illustration so what I ended up doing is just scheduling in a day in which I sat down and just made it happen somehow without really having planned anything to elaborate in advance. And so this is basically what you're looking at now. I just sit down, sat down one afternoon and started sketching. I came up with this little thumbnail first in my um, sketchbook and... What I ended up drawing was similar in terms of composition, but I originally was going to draw two characters sitting uh, in this little setting, but ended up going with just one. And originally I was going to have one or both of the characters facing the camera, but I ended up having the character with their back turned to the viewer, which in retrospect maybe wasn't the best decision, but there was something about... The composition and there was something about the character having her back turned that i thought created a more like intimate type of moment for some reason at least that's the vibe that i personally got from it anyway so as you can see with this one i just went in straight with the pencil and sketched it out and i did use a ruler quite a bit and um the circle Oh, the part I don't remember what the tool is called to make circles, but I have one of those and um, I use that to make the circular window as you probably saw at the very start. So I skipped over a lot of the sketching stages because it was relatively straightforward. I just cleaned up the line art as much as I could and I wanted to paint it without putting down like without doing any line work, which is something that I typically do, but I decided to approach this one. A little bit a little bit differently and i wanted to use watercolor as well unlike my typical medium which as of late like as of the last few years which has mostly been colored ink so what you're looking at is me putting down some washes with watercolor and i'm just slowly going from the very lightest to darker and darker values uh i was approaching this piece very experimentally so i decided to just start with this large brush the largest one that i have and get as much accomplished with it as possible before moving on to a smaller brush for more details so as you can see i'm predominantly working with a wet on wet technique at this stage and i think it's a very common way for artists to start a watercolor painting to just do a lot of washes to create a base uh, color palette and then start going to the details afterwards. And I ended up using this brush for quite a bit of the process. As you can see, it super came in handy when it came to doing the fencing. Um, I knew that the fence was going to get covered by darker bushes, so that's why I just went ahead and did the whole thing to make sure it matches up everywhere, like knowing that it's not going to look so weird at the beginning, uh, sorry, at the end once most of, um, or at least a large portion of it will be covered by the bushes. I had a bit of a hard time picking colors this time around because I typically don't do this type of illustration with such a prominent focus on the background. Um, I think this is actually one of the most background heavy 
things I've done in a long time. Uh, maybe excluding comic book work, but typically, uh, as you may have observed, I just draw a character most of the time without any background at all. So this was something quite different. And the reason why I decided to be uh, decided to make it very prominent in the background, of course, is because it was planned as a sketchbook cover, and I wanted a simple, straightforward, and central composition to look. Um, good on a square format sketchbook because I planned it that way from the beginning so that was the purpose and so I decided to also kind of fade it out near the edge to make sure that whatever uh, format or whatever dimensions the sketchbook will end up being there will be enough art to cover um, the space necessary and that it can maybe wrap around the to the other side a little bit too um, i thought that might look pretty cool so just decided to go with a faded edge and i think it has quite a nice effect it's it is off center now that i think about it i suppose i could have just centered the composition on the page but for some reason i just like moved it over to the right side and decided to fade it out on the left side i don't i don't know what that was about but i just realized that that was kind of a strange decision looking back but yeah now some of you may know when i do voiceovers especially when they're not scripted like this one uh the reason why it's not scripted is because i'm just super burnt out actually because i've been working so much lately to try to finish up all my freelance work and also keep up with the kickstarter campaign for my new art book because i'm notoriously bad at doing stuff like that and i really wanted to try much harder this time around to make sure that it's as successful as it possibly can be um and i don't waste the opportunity to advertise it properly especially with the way that the um algorithms are really working against artists these days and it's really hard to keep up and try to get things on people's radar and I'm, I'm still sure that most of the people that follow me on any social media platform have no idea that this project even exists so yeah I did try my best I mean I suppose I could have tried harder but I am feeling super burnt out at this point which is why I decided to just do a quick voiceover without fussing over the script because i wanted to get it done and it was more important that i put out this video in time before the kickstarter is over rather than like mulling over what i'm going to say and being super careful about it so yeah i wanted to mention that this is a mixed media piece so i started out with watercolor but i knew that at some point i was going to utilize gouache because as some of you know i lately picked it up a little bit unfortunately i had to put a pause take a pause from using gouache because i had a bunch of uh, client work like i mentioned and most of my client work is digital but i did a bunch of gouache studies and doing those studies really helped me to discover what changes i can make to my typical technique and how I can approach artwork a little bit differently and here I am doing that to some degree. The biggest difference here from my typical approach would be that I decided not to do the line work, I pretty much completely skipped the line work uh, the line work step and just did a sketch and started painting straight on top of the sketch. It's something I almost never do for some reason but I think I should really try to do that more often. And yeah, like I mentioned from the beginning, I was planning to use gouache eventually because I knew that in this, in the way that I envisioned this piece, um, I think I saw a couple of pretty photos that I really liked and there was a lot of darkness in, when it comes to the tonal composition. So it's basically like everything around the character and the circle in the center is quite dark, even though it's a sunny day. And I really like the contrast of that. So I knew that bringing details into the darker parts of the piece would require me to pull out gouache to be able to paint opaque um, colors on top of the base. That's something you can't really do with watercolor. So if I wanted to lighten certain areas and bringing, bring in some pops of color that's lighter than the base, uh, it would like I would really have to plan ahead with watercolor and honestly I don't even know how I would be able to achieve that without using some sort of masking fluid which I wasn't really um, 
on board with. Honestly, masking fluid is a really useful tool, but I don't like to utilize it all that much because it's very fussy. So I prefer to just kind of plan things out as much as I can in my head while I'm working on the piece so that I don't have to use masking fluid. So because I wanted to make this a mixed media piece, at some point I switched back and forth between watercolor and gouache and the general rule that I, um, in which I chose to apply those two different mediums was um, I decided to put the base tones or the base colors in watercolor and then use watercolor as much as I can until I got to a point where gouache was necessary for extra details or things that were missing. So I'm not sure how I would approach this piece the second time around. One of the biggest reasons why I decided to use watercolor in the first place for the base especially was because I did want to preserve the visibility of the sketch because one of the most difficult things about gouache is that it does cover up the sketch if I use it uh, if I use it at its opaque consistency right off the bat, even though I do like the effect that it produces, it is quite difficult to work when the sketch constantly gets obscured. I've seen some artists do interesting things in order to combat this, like for instance, I've seen some artists ink the, um, do some line work with on top of the sketch first and use a thick, very dark pen. Uh, to do so or like even a brush and then to paint with gouache on top of it eventually covering up this line work so the only reason why the line work exists is to kind of preserve it so that it's still visible even underneath an opaque layer of gouache up until a certain point so maybe i will try something like that but i do think it's kind of an extra step which i would rather avoid because it does seem a bit redundant to me to do a full line work pass only to have it completely obscured by the paint later on so we'll see we'll see but yeah for for this particular illustration i just wanted to use a pencil only like i mentioned and that's why i did the like i did the, the vast majority of the colors with watercolor and as you will see at some point i got uh, to a point in the piece where I figured even gouache is not really doing it for me and I felt like it would take much too long to get all the very small details in so I did end up switching to polychromos colored pencils near the end to really crisp up a lot of the line work and a lot of the details well, not the line work, but I guess the edges is what I mean by that. Um, and that's something I've been doing a lot, actually, in combination with ink. So I do think it worked out super well for this piece. I think this ended up just being a super mixed media piece, uh, much more than my typical stuff. So, yeah. Now that I've explained the majority of my process here, I guess I wanted to just tell you guys a little bit about what my plans are for the future. I will admit that I don't remember if I did talk about this at length or not in my previous video. I think I must have mentioned it, but my immediate plan is to start development, start the visual development or continue the visual development of my comic series that I'm working on called Gloaming Vale. And I wanted to really take it a lot more seriously this time. I think I probably mentioned as well that I'm planning to start a Patreon. And I've been kind of mulling over that a little bit. Thinking that maybe I can come up with some sort of alternative. Because when it comes to setting up a stable income situation for something like an ongoing project like a comic. A pat Patreon is a really, really great option. However... Platforms tend to be somewhat unpredictable and I do think that just just the, taking into consideration the fact that the control of what happens to the platform or whether it exists or not is completely out of my hands is a little bit scary. But then again, 
I do think that Patreon will be more of a supplemental type of income that I will just use to invest into the comic and hopefully hire a little bit of help down the road because I think this will be a very, very big project since it's already since I already know it's going to be going to be a series and not um, a graphic novel or anything like like that is is pretty lengthy and thus I think I will require quite a bit of assistance once I start the production in a stable manner. And thus I think that's what Patreon is going to be for predominantly and so I figured I'll just use it because <laughs> something that I considered was maybe starting a web or like put putting together a web website and then having a, some, sort of, some sort of subscription service built into the website but I do think that's probably too complicated and since Patreon at this point is something pretty ubiquitous that a lot of people are familiar with it, it would probably be easier to just use that and so that's what I'm going to do at this point I'm just mulling over if I should just start a new one altogether or um, revive the one that I already have that's been dormant for the past few years but we'll see all that is gonna happen pretty soon because I am finally like almost done so close with finishing my external commitments the one last thing that I have to do is a couple of relatively small commissions that um, unfortunately a person has been waiting for for quite some time <laughs> I hope that never happens again but yeah it's been a while since I've taken any commissions and this is pretty much the last of it and I will finish that hopefully in the next couple of days and then next week is when I'm planning to dive right back into writing and developing my comic and I will of course use this channel as a means of communicating my prog progress I'm even thinking that maybe I'll start to vlog a little bit more because there's so many different aspects of development in a comic that I think it might be interesting to just keep a blog of vlog about how it's going because um i'm struggling to come up with a way that i would be able to make videos about multiple parts of the development process and how i would organize that so maybe a vlog would be like a pretty good way of going about that i would love to know what you guys think uh, i'd love to know if you would want me to publicize uh some of my thoughts on how the progress is going because i know it's gonna be difficult i know it's gonna be very difficult because it hasn't been easy up until now, so there's no reason for that to really change. But I definitely think it's worth the effort because in the end, when I look back at my body of work, everything that I like the most has always had something to do with my comic. So that's probably unlikely to change in the future since it's been a stable thing for the past, I don't know, like 15 years or something like that. Going back to this piece, I will say that when I was working on it, there were many parts of the process where I wasn't sure if this was going to work out. Like, especially maybe within the lot. Like, first of all, I got rid of a lot of the sketching progression because to me it seemed kind of tedious to watch. Uh, but I wanted to let you guys know that I was having a hard time with the sketch. It was difficult um, a lot of the time. I don't struggle with sketching and sometimes it's actually very fun and quite easy and enjoyable for me to sketch out the rough but now and then there will be a piece that just gives me so much trouble and I have to redraw things over and over and over again. This has no bearing on how it turns out in the end is one of the things that I've noticed which is kind of encouraging because you'd think that if a piece is a huge struggle, then it would be much harder to turn it into something that I'd be proud of. But I think the struggle honestly just happens sometimes. I think it has something to do with burnout, probably something to do with my mental state at the time. And I do tend to overwork now and then. Like what happens is I will work too much and then I'll get completely burnt out and I'll need to take some time off. That's not a legitimate vacation, but it's like I'll just stay home and essentially just do nothing and just i don't know procrastinate and do chores and 
not do any art so that happens to me quite a bit it's a pattern that i'm trying to break but yeah i think the mindset has a lot to do with how the beginning stages of a piece ended up, end up going and for this one in particular it was a very difficult start and i kind of wanted to give up about halfway through but i think um i'm really help hopeful or i'm really thankful that i persevered because uh partially it was due to time constraints like i knew that it was this day that i carved out to do this piece for a particular purpose and i had to get it done no matter what because i just did not have time um to do another attempt or try to do it, do it again later and i'm really thankful for those time constrictions that exist because a lot of the time they do push me towards completing a piece that i may or may not be happy with in the progress and with this one, I think near the end, in the last maybe hour or so, uh, when I started really putting in the details and carving out some of those uh, lighting areas that really add the atmospheric summary kind of, you know, touch the, the light coming through the leaves and such, uh, that's when it really started to come together and I was no longer unsure about how this piece was going to turn out. This one took quite a bit longer than my typical pieces but like i said it's because it's very focused on the background and again a lot of the paper actually got covered up this time with uh drawing materials um unlike my typical stuff which has a white background with just a character featured somewhere in the center so yeah i really hope you guys enjoyed watching this video i i'm glad i finally put it out there and yeah like i said the kickstarter for my new art book is almost done we're in the last little stretch and i really hope some of you if this is your first time hearing about it please check it out uh, i think the book is gonna look fantastic and i'm really looking forward to it being finished and i will see you guys in my next video bye